Hey everyone, welcome back to The Boring Life. I noticed that I tend to put this arm up a lot, so I'm going to try not to do that. It's great when you see yourself recording. Um, so we're back with episode three, and I am still trying to really focus myself on looking at the microphone. Oh, sorry, not the microphone, the, what is that? The camera, yeah, that's what it is, the camera. Uh, we got a beautiful, rainy some kind of spring day here in Toronto and I love it I love actually looking out at the rain people think it's such a bad weather I grew up in Vancouver so maybe that's why but I've also been trying to just say that you have you know that I have great weather when rain is coming down maybe it's some kind of positive psychology where a lot of my meditation is actually done listening to rain music so maybe that's why um yeah so if you're new i've just kind of rambled but practically this vlog is about showing you what it's like in a week in the life of being an entrepreneur and just general entrepreneurship i call it the boring life because it's just really documenting my journey and i just want to show that most journeys are filled with the grind and they're extremely boring not a lot of really fascinating things happen and i this kind of came about where my readers so aka subscribers on my newsletter in the link below um they gave me feedback my podcast listeners gave me feedback on all oh, they they want to catch in on the journey and like see what i'm up to so i thought all right well maybe i'll record it and so that's how this whole vlog came to be i'm continuously figuring out how to make it better so continue to tune in and see the changes that go that i go through and maybe you'll go through changes of your own as well and so yeah, the purposes of the show is to just show you what happens every week when you enter the wilderness, as I like to call it. So I figured out like last week I talked about going through like three different parts, like why is wealthy and healthy. So this time what I'm thinking about is doing kind of a major development stuff, like the, the fun wins, the shiny stuff or just big learnings and then just going through the boring stuff right after, which is just the stuff I do just every day. Um, and yeah, the very not new things, but the things that you just constantly have to do at the work. So major developments for the week. Um, oh, I need my prop. So I met with Steven Shedletsky. I think that's how you pronounce his name. So he is, I think he was employee number four of um, Simon Sinek's company. So Simon Sinek, he wrote... He has this viral TED talk and just lectures all over YouTube on the kind of three circles of start, starting with why. And so he wrote the book, Starting With Why. I'm a big fan of what he does and his book as well. And I reached out to Steven and he's been this amazing guy who actually replied to my cold reach outs. I generally have a 25% hit rate, so this was amazing. And he, we've been going back and forth. He had his newborn baby, uh, I think it's his second child. He had, um, and yeah, I just wanted to really just meet him and try to get him on the podcast. And he was telling me how he was giving a talk at 111 talking about the Infinite Game, which is going to be Simon Sinek's new book. And so I, he invited me. I said, okay, I cleared my schedule. I went down to 111, attended his talk. This was actually the first time I attended something like that, like a talk where it wasn't like a company-sponsored event. So that was also really cool. A lot of the material was stuff I had, I was very familiar with because I've watched so many Simon Sinek videos. But overall, it was just a fascinating experience and I really enjoyed it. And I'm really psyched to have Steven on the podcast for the near future. Something really awesome he gave me was, so he gave me this token. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to show it, but I'm just going to show it. I don't know if the zoom in fi feature is working, but practically there's this logo and on the top, it says a token of inspiration from Steven Shedleski on the bottom. And on the other side, it, it's, it says start with why, and it has why in the middle, and then the what, and then the, and then the how, and then the what. And then it says token of inspiration.com at the bottom. Like it's, it's not like it's, you know, real currency or anything, but I was just sitting in the audience and Steven just came up to me before he gave his talk. And after hearing my story, he gave me this token and he said, this is something they give out to people that inspires them. And he said, you're doing a great job. Just keep on going. And 
it's it's amazing when you hear stuff like that. It's amazing every time I get an email from my readers, listeners, and I guess not viewers. <laughs> and it can really, I think, give perspective to what I'm doing. And I think you need a certain amount of irrational optimism to do this kind of stuff. This is just a wonderful time um, and a wonderful experience gained. And that was a big win for me personally, just on a psychological level and just, I guess, on a business level as well. Um, another big win was, oh, I scheduled two podcast interviews this week. So that's good. Um, it's that operational dance where I constantly try to have as many episodes just ready in the bank or a consistent stream of interviews. But it's just so tricky trying to actually constantly schedule things on a weekly basis and especially when you're trying to constantly meet more fascinating people more interesting people everyone's just so busy and you know these guys are not getting compensated for the interview it's all just them giving me their time and i guess i'm also being very picky with the fact that i do all my interviews in person because i like meeting people and so that also makes it i guess much more difficult to schedule things and yeah so i'm just happy that i have two podcast interviews this week and honestly when there's a week when I'm not doing a podcast interview it's kind of stressful because that means I'm meeting one less person sharing one less story so I'm really happy that I got that scheduled that was a big win another big win was um I emailed um indie I don't know if you guys know but there's a podcast called the indie hackers holy shit It's so loud. The siren is so loud. It's, I can I can totally see this ambulance thing. It's just it's stuck in the Toronto traffic, and I live right next to the highway, so I just see all the shit that just goes on, and like I've I've seen people just get in accidents and stuff looking down at this highway right now, and it's just stupid. This damn like Toronto traffic people just so rude not to overgeneralize <laughs> but when you see the kind of drivers it's just fucking insane um sorry I got derailed and so yeah there's a community called Indie Hackers and the community has its own podcast which is actually amazing I would really highly recommend you listening on that and I've been a big fan of the podcast for a while it's practically uh interviewing um, founders who run bootstrapped and generally remote and profitable uh, technology companies. And as someone who just loves the bootstrap model, and I generally prefer start, like I, I have a general fascination and admiration for startups that run bootstrapped instead of getting venture funding. I just have my own personal views on that. And I've just been a really big fan of the community. And I reached out to Cortland, Cortland Allen, a founder of indie hackers and i really didn't think he'd email me back but he did and it was amazing just because it's it's just like you know you look up to these people and when they email you back with their candid replies it's just amazing and so the question i asked was on this idea of um what what problems indie hackers actually experience um to see how can i help them out in different kinds of ways and obviously i just kind of list out the problems i could potentially solve but I had my kind of sight set on, you know, like the human capital side and how I can make that work. And something else, I don't think I've talked about that in this vlog, is that I actually have a, um, I guess, I guess we've kind of established a relationship that he is my investment partner, but we don't really have a fund yet, so it's kind of more of a potential partnership. Um, but I met a guy who has like 15, 18 years of experience out in Seattle who reached out to me through a previous podcast guest and we spoke we've been speaking the last few months about starting an investment fund and part of that process is constantly testing out a bunch of different hypotheses and this individual who i will respect the privacy of and allow the individual to remain anonymous has way more experience than me has the ability to raise funds and so i'm just kind of in in for the ride as this young ambitious guy who's going to you know, help with creating the pipeline as well as um, just setting up the fund from the get-go in general. And so one of the hypotheses was uh, that I brought up was helping out remote companies and 
the indie hacker community was a very big fit for that. And so that's how this kind of came about. And so it was great to get this kind of feedback. Um, it's only one sample, one sample size at the moment, but you know, I think it's just going to continuously snowball down. So that was a good win for the stuff I'm trying to do. And the past two weeks, I actually got 14 new subscribers. So that was f- phenomenal. You know, you might think, oh, Dan, you know, what, what are you doing? You only got 14 subscribers in the past two weeks. Yeah, well, you know, you know what? Maybe, yeah, maybe I'm not that great at marketing and growth. But this was the most subscribers I got in the past, like, 10 months of me doing it. And maybe it is realistic of the fact that, yeah, it's really hard um, if, if you do the kind of strategies I'm doing where I'm not prompting people to subscribe. I'm not giving them stuff for free if they subscribe or give me their email. I know there's a lot of tactics like it's tactics um, to do that. And yeah, I personally think a lot of them are sleazy. And I think it's a pretty cheap ass way of getting people's emails. And I'd rather have people who want to actually give me their emails because they want to read the stuff I write. And so that's probably also why I do have close to a 50% readership base for my newsletters, whereas most readership bases are like 5% at best. So you know, I like to try to focus on the quality over the quantity. And so that was great. That, I think for me, it's been a great way to get continued validation on what I'm doing. So thank you if you're a subscriber watching this. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And I really do hope you tune in more. Um, and also tell your friends. Tell your friends about it. <laughs> and yeah, so that that was a kind of big win. I really, um, I was really elated that was about that, actually. And let's see, last week I had eight meetings, and so I love meeting people, so more meetings every week. Like, when, I, when my calendar is filled, filled, I love it. It's the best. I, like, I'm honestly all for, like, constantly talking to people, figuring out what they're doing, and trying to build a relationship that I get really happy when I have a filled week, and when it's rather empty, I'm actually pretty sad about it, even though I get more time to do other big projects. But yeah, so met a couple of new people, um, trying to re- rekindle old relationships, trying to continuously get more people on the podcast. So that kind of went on about. Uh, I had one discussion with a company, another startup that has more of an audio platform to try to license out my podcast episodes and try to create that kind of revenue model. But that didn't really work out because um, I thought it would. I had all these dreams, I had all these fascinations, I had all these price points I was going to pitch. But it kind of just get kind of end up just getting shut down, um, just because they just straight up said, "Yeah, we don't really care about stories as much. We need want more tactical, you know, informational stuff." And so I thought, okay, well, fuck it. Um, I'm not gonna change the way I'm gonna do my interviews just because I like doing it this way. And it was just gonna see if we can do a kind of a partnership. But I guess it might not work out at the moment. No doesn't mean never, so who knows? Maybe I'll partner up with them again, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so that's been the big major developments of the week. And so the general boring, the boring parts, um, let's see, like habits-wise, reading. Um, I didn't get to read that much this week, so that was a little ups- like it's disappointing on myself, but I got to pick that slack up. So I've only read about maybe 60 pages this week on average, so... You know, 10 pages a day, so I'm kind of 10 pages short on a weekly reading. Uh, I think a big cool learning was on the Cambodian genocide. I talk about it in my newsletter, but it's practically, I didn't know that Cambodia went through this whole communist fiasco as well while the Vietnam War was going on, and they practically had the same shit that happened in the Soviet Soviet Union, but a lot of people know about Russia, about how Stalin just killed a ton of people and made it into an agrarian society, um, all based on Marx and Lenin's teachings. Well, I think the same thing happened to Cambodia, and now they're a, kind of a society where most of the population is under 40 years of age, and no one's a doctor, no one is an engineer. Like, they've killed all those people off back in the genocide. And so that was really, I think, eye-opening to learn about. So that was really cool, um, just to learn about it at least, just to be knowledgeable that, that it actually happened, you know. That, that kind of shit's more important than knowing what kind of jacket Kanye was wearing. Um, I'd say in terms of the product of the week if you are not really tuned in as a subscriber um, this week's interview was with uh, Aaron Levitz so the interview that came out 
last week, I guess. Um, Aaron has a really fascinating career journey. Like I, like I just love talking to him, <laughs> and I just wish I had more time to talk to him more about it. Uh, high level, he's a mechanical engineer turned movie producer. So the tagline is that he went from wanting to design Ferraris to now producing movies, and he just has this crazy north star, north north star about um, just finding a place in the intersection of tech and entertainment. And so his just career journey was just fascinating. And I really enjoyed talking to him. And so I think you'll get a lot of, out of it too, just to hear about how someone's career journey can be so fascinatingly interesting and how you can do it yourself. So that was the podcast interview this week. And the essay this week was on um, diversity and how I think people are mistaking the term diversity. And I touched upon two specific things, one being context over content. So diversity of skin color doesn't really mean diversity if you know people think the same way. So I could be Asian by looks, but if I've been, if I'm like a fifth generation Canadian, might not even be a possibility actually. If I'm a third generation Canadian, I might think pretty similarly to a Caucasian dude who is also a third generation Canadian. But if the Caucasian dude has lived in like 10 countries and is a brand new immigrant here from, I don't know, the last place he lived in was like Bolivia, that dude is way more diverse than I would be if I've only been living in Toronto my entire life in one boring ass job my entire life. I'm not very diverse at that point. Just my skin color might look it. So that's kind of context over content. And then another thing I'd really talk deep in the essay about is equality of opportunity over um, is more important than equality of outcome. Equality of outcome is, you know, practically saying 50% of, you know, executives must be female. Yeah, that's kind of forcing, forcing things upon the actual organization, and that can actually not be a good thing, especially, like, you know, it's like saying 100 people applied, 10 were women, 90 were dudes, we have 20 slots, we're just going to take all 10 who are women and 10 who are dudes. It's just not going to work out. It's just not a great way to build an effective company. Rather, you want to have equality of opportunity. Like you want to make sure that every girl who had the ch- who every girl has a chance to apply, every girl, um, you know, has a chance to like be inspired by other people who are role models who can continuously allow them to just you know, don't be afraid of like applying. Whether they choose to do it or not is up to them, but you can't force it upon them. But it's more knowing that they have the opportunity to do so. Um, yeah, so those are the kind of deeper things that go inside in the essay. So that was a really fun one to write about. Uh, in terms of, I guess, general other systems in terms of nutrition and stuff, my sleep hasn't been good. It hasn't been good. I still wear my night goggles, my goggles of the future. They're like orange and tinted, and it helps me get my melatonin levels uh, back up, I think back up, uh, to facilitate better sleep. But I've been sleeping later. Uh, a lot of my work has been getting constantly pushed back. It's also my inability to focus too focus so i'm meditating more i'm trying to really focus and hone in on the key tasks so we'll try to work on that a little more uh nutrition same old i drink the same smoothie for lunch every day um some sometimes supplemented with like a scone or a bagel when i feel naughty (laughs) or when i feel weak (laughs) and i just really need that sugar uh luckily i have a lot of healthy things going for me that still lets me maintain my figure um yeah, so uh, let's see. I, s- I saw it only once this week, which is not good. I usually need to do it two times, and so that really didn't impact my recovery. I could really feel it in my muscle joints. But uh, I still did two weeks of car- uh, cardio twice a week. I still did uh, four rounds of heavy training. And my average fasting was, I think it was 17 hours, 17.1, 17.2 hours per day, all seven days green light, all good. I meditated six out of the seven days for 10 minutes in the morning. Um, yeah, that was, that was it, practically. So I think the system is kind of all, you know, working well. I'm writing for an hour every morning as well, constantly pumping out good essays for you guys to read. And yeah, that's practically it for this week. I'm constantly thinking of new ways to make this vlog more entertaining for you and actually potentially add more value. I'm thinking of having guests in, but I haven't figured it out yet. Um, I'm also figuring out whether I want to make this into a separate podcast, but that's a whole lot of work just to build that stuff in again and redo the whole infrastructure. Man, that took a, it took me months to really get my ass off and 
start the accounting for podcast and it was just not fun <laughs> doing the infrastructure work it's just not fun i had a company that actually was going to pay me um a, f- a couple thousand dollars to set it up for them i told them fuck i don't ha- i don't want to do that it's not fun and i know it's money I, I know i haven't really made money in the last year but at the same time it's like ah, oh, do i really want to dedicate time to it if i really don't need to yeah and my thoughts around money have been changing a lot too that's actually the essay actually uh i write i am writing or i i published this morning which i will talk about in next week's vlog kind of gets fucking confusing because i'm talking about a week retrospectively as i'm recording but yeah um that's my ramble that's my rant and so thanks for tuning in and i hope you tell your friends to tune in i hope you check out all the other stuff that i have in my links in my site podcasts writings all that and if you like all the lifting the lifting videos i like i tag and at the end stay on watch those get inspired or laugh at how much weaker i am than you or you know if you want lifting advice i don't really know if i should give it to you yeah so at least take care for now and have a great week bye bye